Basically, BNRS4 is still smoking, but it's a good turbo, so we're gonna try and reduce our crankcase pressures even more because uh, Eric's been doing a lot of reading and he found that um, people are saying that the BNRS4 is very sensitive to crankcase pressure. So we're just gonna go ahead and put the uh, David Motorsports PZ plate in, which will allow us two extra ports to vent more pressure through this catch can. And that'll go well with the catch can that's already set up in there. And the, what's it called? What's it called then? Speed performance oil breather cap. That thing, all right. Now, even with all of these crankcase pressure relief mods, we're still having some smoking at wide open throttle only. And also, if the engine's a little bit on the colder side, when the piston rings haven't sealed up completely, you're getting a lot more blow by, crankcase pressure's a little bit higher, and it, it makes sense that it's a crankcase pressure issue causing the turbo to smoke. If um, something isn't explained in the video, just leave a comment and we'll get back to you. So in order to get access to where we're gonna mount everything, obviously the intake manifold has to come off, this uh, hot pipe has to come off, and the bumper cover will come off just to make it easier for us. All right, things are gonna get goofy because it's already midnight. Yes, sir. Okay guys, so before we get into the install of the Damon Motorsport PCD plate and dual vented cash can setup, I just wanna get into a few things on you know why we're doing this and exactly where we are with the BNRS4. So a year ago when we put the BNRS4 turbo in and we took it to the track, we noticed a large amount of oil consumption and a lot of smoking coming out of the back of the tailpipe coming from the turbo. And uh, so the first thought in my mind was put a restrictor bolt in it. So I ordered a JBR oil restrictor bolt, put that in, it did not solve the smoking issue. It was still there. So the next area of uh, investigation was crankcase pressure. We didn't have any crankcase pressure relief at that time. So I ended up getting a speed performance oil breather cap, putting that in and did some more testing, still had a smoking issue. So I'm like, maybe I need to crank, uh, ventilate the crankcase even more. So I ended up getting a Damon Motorsports vented cash can and installed that in a standard configuration with the stock VCD plate and still had a smoking issue. So I'm like, what is going on here? I've got a JBR oil restrictor bolt in, I've got a speed performance oil breather cap, and I've got a vented cash can. Why am I still getting smoke out of the BNRS4? So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's take it to the next level. Let's get a Damon Motorsports PCB plate and do a dual vented cash can setup. So I did that, okay? Still had a smoking issue. What's going on? Called Brian, he ends up sending me a restrictor bolt with an even smaller hole than the JBR bolt. Put that in, still had a smoking issue. I just couldn't understand what was going on. So I did some digging around on the forums and a lot of people are saying that crankcase pressure is the main issue and it's not that you need a restrictor bolt. So I ended up putting the stock restrictor bolt back in. It's like night and day, the, the thing doesn't even smoke anymore. So the restrictor bolt was the first mistake that I made, right? So what I would recommend to you guys who have BNRS4s that smoke, do not put a restrictor bolt in, focus on venting that crankcase. Enjoy the video. All right, so we got the air dam off and the turbo hot pipe off. Uh, now we're gonna raise the car so we can uh, remove the serpentine belt because we need to loosen the, uh, the power steering pump to move it out of the way so we can get to one of the bolts that's holding the manifold in place. Pump it louder. So we're just raising it so we can take the serpentine belt off. I'm ready. You get it on? Hold it, hold it. There we go. Just taking the bolts off for the power steering pump. We don't have to fully remove the bottom one, we'll just loosen the bottom one. We'll remove the two top ones and we'll slide it over to the side just to get to that one bolt holding the manifold. All right, we're gonna pull the bumper off now because we are going to need to make some sort of mount for this behind the bumper. Okay, so we got the bumper off now. You can see the front mount intercooler. You can see that custom ducting we made there. Looks like it's holding properly. It's not coming loose or anything. This side right there, that actually works really well along with the JBR Raiders air dam. Keeping coolant temps nice and cool. All right, we're just in the process of taking the uh, intake manifold off now. We're just dis disconnecting the uh, PCB line that goes to the vented catch can. And then we're gonna be able to install the PCB plate. All right, we've got the uh, intake manifold removed now. And we're getting access. We're removing the final hoses that are attached to the PCB valve and then we'll be able to unbolt the OEM PCD plate. Okay, the harnesses are kind of in the way here, but this, that plastic plate, this is where the uh, green PCV uh, valve went, and that uh, that plastic plate there, that's gonna be taken out. 
a bunch of fasteners around it. And that's where this plate will go. Julian is loosening those eight millimeter bolts on the, the uh, stock PCB plate in place. It was a bit of a pain to get all of the uh, hoses from the uh, PCB system disconnected because they kind of caked on there through uh, after so many heat cycles. Just slowly, we're making progress. Okay. That is the stock PCB plate. There's only one hole for the PCB valve. That's it. Okay, we got the new gasket in, it fits perfectly. We're gonna put a little bit of oil on the gasket before we put it in. All right, so we got new hardware. I think the, the bolts that they provide are a little bit longer. Yeah, that makes sense to make up for the thicker, uh... It's a thicker plate. And there's this PCV valve O-ring. We're gonna take our new PCV valve, pop the O-ring on, like so. And this is going to go right here. I don't want to rip it. I think I might need to put a little bit of oil on this seal. A little bit of oil to give it a little bit of persuasion to get into that hole. There's a little ridge in there to put the C-clip. We got to push it in so it goes past that. There we go. Okay, we can rotate it any which way we need to. Now we got to put this little C-clip in place. This little guy here. Gonna be a bit tricky. Oh, make progress here. Let's see if I can get the pick on this corner without stabbing myself. Nice. All right. Ooh. Somebody's gonna get stabbed. It's hopefully it's not gonna be me. That's okay. pretty awesome. That's that fits really nice. That that should be good. Okay. That's awesome. Okay, so these seem to be compression fittings here. Kind of just have to get them in a position where it might work. Preemptively trying to figure out if it's gonna hit something, which is knowing our luck. All right, so the PCB plate is in. Now it's just a matter of fastening all the fasteners. Uh, the location of the elbows is basically facing down, so the hoses are gonna go down and out to the catch cans right in there and hopefully there's enough hose supplied to get to where we want to go these are the two catch cans okay so now since the catch can has to run two tubes to the plate they're going to be the same length so we're just cutting this heater hose in half at four in the freaking morning that's what happens when you like boost hose clamp and the hose on look at the bang okay so that looks we're trying to keep the lines straight and free of rubbing. As you can see, you can kind of see what we got here for the line set up down there. I don't know if you can see that. The PCV plate is there. All the lines are facing down and going to their respective cans. We just gotta hook the lines up to the cans now. Now you'll notice that we have this vacuum, this uh, 5 8 hose here. That's going to the top of the second can that we've installed. Um, that's to allow the crankcase pressure to be vacuumed out at the same time from the turbo inlet. Okay, so the dual catch can set up and PCV plate is in. So now we're just gonna see if uh, it fixed our smoking turbo issue. 